All right. I said before, um, when I, when I interviewed a, another artist, like I was giving out the station call letters and I was, you know, doing some other things, but it's not the radio anymore. You know, we're, we're doing this visually today. Um, anyway, I'm Mookie or Mark, if you prefer from uh, 88, five FM here in Southern California. Um, Emily from Indigo girls is here today. And how are things? You know, I have a lot to be grateful for because my family as well. Um, we actually came down to Florida to isolate. So we've been here a long time now. Um, but you know, it, it's a lot of adjustment. It's pro I probably have nothing new to add to anybody else who talks about what it's like for them. You know, I've got a seven year old and we're homeschooling her and we're in a small place. So we're all kind of bumping into each other. But as I say, we're all healthy and, uh, I'm just watching the world go by and looking forward to a new administration in November. Yeah, no kidding. There's a lot of things happening and a lot of things to look forward to, I guess. Where are we at in the school year right now? We're probably just uh, past the point of where spring break would have been, right? So we're, we're in school mode, huh? I know, that's right. It's, it's funny because we came down here and started the homeschooling and it was really an adjustment. Uh, you know, I, most kids probably don't want their parents schooling them when they have like the greatest teacher of their life they've just come from but um she's adjusted really well and then we got adjusted and then it was spring break so that was kind of ironic and hilarious but now we're back into it we've been uh working all morning and now she's doing some artwork while i do an interview yeah it's have you done have you done much of these things well i, I do know that you know pretty early on in in the crisis i guess um you know indigo girls took to the internet and and did a, a session um, and there were a lot of viewers, uh, almost 70,000 viewers on that one. Yeah. Is that something that you're regularly doing now? Or was that sort of a one-off thing while you, you know, deal with family stuff right now? We're going to do it again. Um, we haven't been able to do it because Amy's in Georgia and I'm in Florida, but I'll be back in Georgia fairly soon. And then we have plans to do at least a couple more. It was really fun. I mean, we decided to do that the second, uh, the early in, or very early in March, when we had to start canceling our shows. Mm -hmm. And so we had no idea that that many people would be joining. We just thought, well, this will be fun. And we feel sad that we can't be with uh, our fans and we can't be playing. And, and so it just turned out to be this thing where, I mean, I have friends who sat out six feet apart from each other in their front yards and just played it. And, and I heard that old friends caught up with each other and, so a lot of cool stuff happened. I know that um, I just did one on Instagram with Brandy Clark last night and I did shut in and, and sing. And so it's been a really great way of staying in touch, but I'm looking forward to getting back with Amy and doing another one. Yeah. Do you feel like um, the things that we're learning now, like you as an artist, myself on the radio side, the things that we're learning now, you know, I mean, this could be the future. We're setting ourselves up for this. It's a whole new territory you know, and um, now we're all just trying to figure out the digital world, but I feel like there's, there's something there, you know? Yeah. I, I, you know, my only hope of course is that more people can get access to uh, uh, the signals that they need to participate fully because not everybody has computers or internet or stuff that can connect them as well. But for those of us who do, it's been wonderful to connect. And of course, human beings are resilient. Um, I think everyone, is going through the same sets of struggles and some have them a lot worse you know people who are just very very economically or they know someone who's been sick or died or has died um and so i always think about people who don't have access as much as i think about people who do and and honestly i miss the human contact but we do what we can um and this is a very i mean this is Epic. This is a global epic event that's first for my generation and first for the younger generations, for sure. Nothing since World War II. Um, yeah, I just did something like this with an artist out of Australia. And to think that, you know, people are going through the same thing in Australia, it just blows my mind. It's so hard to, to wrap my head around, you know. Um, we thank our lucky stars every day, uh, even though it's difficult. Um, you know, my wife and my toddler in the next room and I've got a home studio now and, you know, the radio station really hasn't missed a beat, thankfully. Um, but, you know, it's it's a tough juggle to do work and family stuff. Um, but, you know, we're getting good family time and we're healthy and we're taking care of ourselves. We got food in the fridge. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. you know, there, there's there's some good stuff, you know, that that we're definitely thankful for. 
Um, wanted to ask you about the new record. Okay. Uh, right, from uh, Indigo Girls, uh, Look Long, coming out on the 22nd of May. Um, was it the 22nd of May all along, or was that pushed back no. because of this whole thing? Okay. <laughs> It was, I, I can't remember when the first release date was maybe going to be in March and then it was going to be in April and now it's in May and we're like, are we sure it's in May? But I think that's definitely uh, the final thing. I know there are lots of other artists who are releasing or have released albums recently and everybody's just doing um, everything that they can to just remind people that the music's out. So obviously there aren't going to be any concerts in May but the album's no. coming out and we're excited about it. And it's awesome. Like radio stations like yours can still play the music. So super, super grateful for that. Um, well, well, thank you. Um, <laughs> and the song that we've been playing for a number of weeks now, all of a sudden is um, change my heart. It sounds great, great, great. Uh, we're in the position right now where we can't afford not to play a good radio song. So when we got it and heard it for the first time, we knew, you know, it, it'd be good for us. Um, can you give us a, not only a, a storyteller's type of moment uh, as far as the background in this song, but um, you know, what was the approach that Indigo Girls took uh, writing and recording the new record? Well, um, this song in particular, I wrote on electric guitar. I don't always write. In fact, I write much more on acoustic instruments, banjo, uh, ukulele, or guitar. But I wanted to write this song on electric guitar. So uh, that was my approach on this one, and I can tell you what it's about if you if you want to know. But for, as far as the album, it's been done over a year now. We went to England uh, to Peter Gabriel's Real World Studio near Bath, England, and we got together with John Reynolds, who produced uh, Come On Now Social, an album we did 20 years ago, and we got together with a bunch of our British, our UK friends, Irish friends, people that we met on Lilith Fair a million years ago that had some of them have toured with us through wow. the years. Yeah, we met them on that tour. <laughs> and then they're just incredible players and people. So we maintained our friendships and our professional relationships. So we were just were touring over in the UK and we were having coffee with or tea with John. And we we're like, we want to make another record together. It was just in the moment. And then we started making it happen. So we went over there. We, we didn't have a lot of time. I don't know, 10 days, maybe something like that. And uh, wow. I was deathly ill. I recorded all my final vocals after we'd gotten the main tracks done. And uh, John came up with some great production ideas, just a, a rhythmic approach to each song. I'm a person that loves uh, beats. I'm a huge hip hop fan, R&B fan. And John really has his finger on the pulse of rhythm. And so he bridges the gap, or not the gap, but the distance between how Amy wants her songs produced maybe and how I want mine produced. So even like a ballad, like the title tra track, Look Long, is an acoustic ballad, but he's got an 808 machine in there going. And that's mm. to me like, ah. I mean, you and then Amy's about... songs have the proper rock edge to them, you know? That's, that's incredible. Um... Thank you for that insight. Um, I, you know, I, I'm a hip hop fan going back several years. Frankly, I don't, you know, I haven't kept up, you know, you know, and uh, for me growing up on the West Coast, it was um, quite literally, it was Snoop and Dr. Dre and Ice Cube and some of those acts. And then, you know, you, you learn more about Wu-Tang Clan and Mob Deep. Um, yeah. are, are there hip hop artists or producers um, that you admire doing it today, or you're more influenced by um, the original cats? Both. Yeah. I mean, you know, I was heavy into Public Enemy when they came out because I loved uh, political rap. Um, but then I also am a huge Biggie fan and a Tupac fan, and of course, Snoop. So I love um, all of the old school, but I also like I'm really into Young Thug. He's from Atlanta. Hmm. And obviously the life that he writes and raps about is very different from my life, but just, I, I love his voice and his poetry and the way he describes the life that he's living. So I'm a huge, and I love Gucci Mane, huge Gucci Mane fan. And I love um, uh, Drake. I can see why he's like the number one streamed <laughs> rapper uh, of all time. It's just yeah. really, really really good for the ears you know so and i like the hybrid stuff that's happening like even in country music some of the stuff that like sam hunt that has done that like a song like i just want to take your time that's kind of half 
influenced by rap and half country and half pop and a lot of interesting hybrid. I, usually I will stay on top of what's going on, but now with uh, homeschooling and um, just, you know, being busy in a strange way, unforeseen, yeah. I haven't been able to keep up as much. So uh, hearing you talk like that almost inspires me to go out and do a deep dive into what's going on in the hip hop scene right now. Um, you know, I've been just, you know, sort of the indie bands and stuff have just been coming at me 24 seven. Cause I guess yeah. that's more or less our format, you know? So, yeah. you know, I, it's, first of all, it's hard to listen to an album front to back. Um, Cause it's just like single, 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 um, let alone just listen for pleasure. Um, I know it's really that way, you know, like I think all of a sudden it became playlists and in, in a way like my little sister and I, when I, when I was growing up like seventies, eighties, I mean, we listened to the radio and we were in love with all the singles, you know, but at the same time we found artists that we love and we listened to the albums from front to back. So it's like, I don't have any criticism of the way things changed. It's just, I, I still am holding on to the pleasure of listening from an album from front to back. They're, like, I love rap music, but I love all kinds of music. And uh, there's this young artist, Katie Pruitt. I don't know if y'all started playing her. Yeah, yeah. I listened to her actually when I was driving down to Florida for my family's quarantine. I listened to her album front to back and loved it. Hmm. And like recently I went back and listened to uh, an old Elton John album, um, Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. Wow. Listen from yeah. front to back and like, Oh, man, that is just genius. So I'm still old school in that way, but I've always loved a good single, I got to admit. Um, sure. And do you, are you discouraging your, your child uh, from getting into the music or uh, are you encouraging that? Or, I mean, you know. I mean, I encourage her to get into whatever she wants to as long as yeah. it's not too much screen time. But she's, she's really into musicals. So, you know, she's, she loves Hamilton and she loves Frozen and she loves, <laughs> yeah. uh, she, we were into the greatest showman for a while. So it's pretty, uh, it's probably to be expected. She's in her musical phase, but she's also, she just started, started writing a song on her own and she's seven and it's that's not fantastic. bad. Oh my gosh. You. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah it's um, super cool. You know, my daughter is almost two, but just, um, you know, having her at the radio station when we have like a live performance or something like that, I think that's so super cool, you know, kind of getting I mean, there's nothing like live music, is there? It, there's yeah. just, I think we're, <laughs> I mean, I can't wait until we can have live, live music again, but because I know yeah. that my daughter loves being at concerts and your daughter's only two, but loves it, obviously. Yeah, and um, gosh, you know, when the dust settles and, you know, all the, the lockdown is lifted or whatever, um, you know, hopefully you could come to the studio. We'd love to have you for a, you know, live performance and interview um, on the radio in uh, Los Angeles. We'd love that'd that be, too. We'd love it. That, that'd be fantastic. Speaking of live, and uh, I apologize because I have not even listened to this record. The previous record was live. And you linked up with um, a Colorado, what, University of Colorado Symphony Orchestra. Yeah. Um, that just the concept is epic. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and, and listen to some of that stuff. Uh, but again, the new Indigo Girls record is uh, Look Long. It's coming out on the 22nd of May. Hopefully uh, <laughs> it still does. I think there's, a, <laughs> it's definitely coming out now. There's three songs that have been released from it already. So if people want to get a, take a peek and get a listen. There are three of them that are out there cool. available. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go. Um, thank you so much for your time. I've done a few of these so far this week. Best one yet. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm talking hey, about. Um, thanks a lot for playing the song. It, it means a lot to us. It really does. We've been around a long time and uh, radio is important and I love radio. And so uh, thank you. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, it's nice to really uh, be able to meet you um, kind of in person. You know? Yeah, you too. You too. Totally. Um, take care of the family and um, yeah. talk to you real soon. God willing. I know, right. Okay. Uh, Thank right. you. Bye. Appreciate it. Bye.